Hey strangers, I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I'm stuck in quarantine just like the rest of the world. I've uh, been playing my guitar, and I've read everything I own, so I put down the guitar for a moment and was surfing the web and trying to find something I haven't read, and I came across some obituaries, and for some reason I clicked it, and expecting it all to be bad news about the, you know, the Rona and everything, I found one that wasn't, and it said, cause of death patiently down the boogie and played that funky music i get it he played the funky music yeah you get it we're gonna do a song by the meters and trying to stick to the pattern on this channel i'm gonna try to find ones that haven't already been taught on the internet and pretty much everything that is taught on youtube about meters is sissy strut there's so many videos of that, so I looked through some meter song, found this one. It's called Pungi. It's from the Look a Pie Pie album. Great album. Give it a listen if you haven't to learn some sweet, funky riffs. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So the song starts on a C7 chord. This is the one that most people learn first. There's also this one. But it doesn't play the chords. Instead, it plays a riff around the chords. So, if the vibe is this C7, it starts on the first fret of the A string, which is the flat 7, right? It plays it, bends it slightly, plays it again, and then pulls off the open string. And then it goes 3-1 on the low E string. And then 1 on the D, and then 3 on the A which is the minor third and root of the chord. So the whole riff sounds like. Again. And then it goes in to the main riff, what I consider the main riff of the song, which stays on the C7 vibe, right? But the guitar player is not playing that chord. Instead, he starts on the fifth fret of the D string, which is the fifth of this C chord. So it starts on the fifth fret, and then on the same string, on the D string, it plays uh, eight, seven, pulls off the five, and then plays the seven again. So it's... And then it shifts, so you take your whole hand and put it down so your pointer finger is on the third fret, and it but it starts on the fifth with your third finger on the A string and quickly so it plays the five and then slides into the six and then back to the five and then first finger on the third fret of the A so it's the whole riff sounds like again Riff takes almost the same uh, melody and just moves it up a fourth. So on the guitar, if you <clears throat> go up a string and play the same fret, that's moving up a fourth. So if we're on the fifth on the D and then go to the fifth on the G, that's going up a fourth. Um, so you take almost the same melody, which goes like... So you play it on the G string instead of the D string. And it's the same in the beginning... But instead of doing the slidey part, it shifts again, goes down to the D string, plays 6, 5, 3, and then does the same thing on the A string, 6, 5, 3, and then goes to the E string, shifts again, and plays 4, 3, 1. The whole two riffs played together sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, 4... Then it goes up a fourth. And then it goes. Then it goes to a new riff. The whole riff sounds like this. Four, one. And to do that, you again, you start 
on this 3-3-3 three, three, three on the D, G, and B strings, which is the top part of this B flat chord, right? I do it with my first finger barred. You could do it with like this, like some people would play an A, but to transition to the next part, I find it easier if you just play it with your first finger, barring these three, and it, muting the high E string, right? Because you don't want to play that. You just want to play these three notes. So it goes, and then slides up to eight on the D string and eight on the B string. So this is a sixth interval. You do not play the G string. So you mute that with the flesh of your middle finger as you play. You play it like you would play a chord, except you don't play the middle. So it's eight, eight on the D and G, B, uh, excuse me, D and B string, right? And then it's uh, seven, uh, seven, six on the D and B, again, muting the middle one, and then five and five on those same strings. And then instead of playing just the B flat like we did before, you do three on the D, three on the G, but four on the um, B string, so, and then you do the same. So the whole thing sounds like this. Again, a little bit slower. Three, four, one. Four, one. After that, it goes back to the main riff again. And then does that twice and then does the upper fourth riffs uh, twice, I believe. Uh, and then it goes to what I'm going to call the first bridge or whatever. Um, and it sounds like this. So this next part starts on the C, the third fret of the A string, and goes between the, the third fret of the A and then third fret of the D. And it goes in between that a few times like this. I use my pointer finger for both of those. And then uh, five on the G and six on the B. Using my pointer finger to mute the D string. Does that three times? And on the last time, it just does this twice. And then one, three on the low E. Uh, you can hammer on or just play both notes individually. I think he hammers it on, so it's like. After you hear that riff the first time, it goes into the organ solo. He starts uh, tickling those keys. I'm going to shift the camera here just a little bit so you can see my strumming pattern. So again, it's on the A7, except we're up here now at the 8th fret, so this C7 idea. And the riffs, the whole riff sounds like this. So it starts on the 8th fret of the G, slides into the 9, and then the 8 on the high E, so it skips the string and plays the high E, which is the root of the C. And then he adds the pinky uh, on the 11th fret of the B string. So it's like... And then two upstrokes on the same, same note. And then it does, again, the 6th interval, uh, 8 and 8 on... So 8 on the D and 8 on the B. Slides that up a whole step to the 10 and the 10, and then goes back down to the 8 and the 8. Again, you're muting this G string. You just want to hear these two. You want to hear the D string and the B. These are sixths. So it slides up and goes back down really quick. So the whole thing sounds like this. So the first time he plays the slide in, and that's the only time you hear that little... Uh, it's the only time you hear that. And then from then on, it's just. 
So he just chills on this spot while the, the organ solos, you know, staying out of his way. It's a good thing to understand and fuck. You don't want to be... The guitar player was doing that, the whole C7 shape, when the organ was soloing, you'd be getting in his way, stepping on his toes, getting in the way of tickling those keys. All right, so there's two things I want to quickly mention here that's important for funk guitar. Um, one is the right hand, which is a 16th note strumming. This is all over the internet, so I'm not going to get too deep into it, but what you want to do is keep your hand moving in a 16th note pattern. So for the song, it's like... Da, da, da. You know, my hand's moving in a 16th note pattern, but I'm not hitting the strings unless there's a note being played. So, for this one, so I just keep going like this. So you keep your hand moving to keep the beat. Think of it as like the hi-hat on the drums. And the second thing I want to mention here is remember to mute the strings that are close by to if you're playing funk. And so in this case, so it's, it's the 8 and the 11, I don't want to hear this G string when I'm playing it. So I'm using just the very tip of my pinky, which is holding down this 11th fret, but it's touching the G as well. And I think I'm using my middle finger to mute the D string in case I hit that. So it's... as I make the mistake I'm saying not to do. And another thing for third um, is these are very staccato notes. So when you play them, you immediately lift your finger, uh, lift your fingers just slightly so it mutes those strings as well. So it's just, you know, it, it, it really gives the, the right feel to a funk vibe, just very staccato notes. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's it for this one. Stay safe in the quarantine. Uh, you know, you know why they couldn't put together an 80s music festival? It's not because of the coronavirus, actually. They couldn't put together an 80s music festival because it was too much of a cluster funk.